we're going to be going over how you can handle logging out users and how to add styled components in Next.js. So to start off, I already wrote out the logout mutation that we're going to use. And this is going to be super simple because we don't have any variables and it just returns true or false back. Uh, so there's no selection that we need to do for fields. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to start by creating a new mutation under the user. So this is going to be our logout mutation. Export const. And then we'll paste that in. And as usual, we'll import from Apollo Boost. And then after we do this, you guessed right, we're going to generate the component for it and the types. So we're going to go to our log or our console and we'll say yarn generate. And then I'm going to start up the server. So now the way I like to handle logging out users is to create a kind of a separate page that I redirect the user to and then I re redirect them to a different page after they log out. So I'm going to create this logout page dot TSX and I'm going to say export defaults um, and this is just going to be just make a function it's going to be super basic and we're going to have to use a get uh, initial static props uh, which we used over here um, as well as this component so I'm going to say const instead of doing export default up here because I need to give this a name I'm going to say logout and then below here I can say export default um, and then we're actually just going to return null because uh, we don't really want to show anything the whole point of this page is just to fetch uh, basically or call the logout mutation and then that's it and then redirect the user so we're going to say logout.get, and we can copy the get initial props. And we're going to set it to a function here. All right, so this is going to return an empty object. And in here, we're going to say my context. And we're just going to use the Apollo client that's there. And we're going to say Apollo client.mutate. And the mutation that we want to do is the logout mutation. And actually, we don't even care about the types. Let's make this async and await this. Um, so we don't really need to pass. We could pass in the types for the mutation here, but we actually don't care because we don't care about the response and there's no variables we're going to pass in. So I guess we don't really need that. But anyway, so it's going to call the logout mutation. And then after that, we're just going to say router.push. And we're going to go to the home page. Um, I guess we could also just take them to the login page maybe too after they log out. Uh, again, your choice wherever you want to uh, take them after they log out. Uh, but that's the two-step sequence. Um, the other thing is when they log out, I like to also clear the Apollo store. So I say Apollo client dot reset store. And say await on that because I believe it returns a promise. Yeah. So what reset store is going to do is because Apollo client caches all the uh, things, all the queries that we run, we want to just remove the cache when the user logs out so there's not any stale data if the user were to log in with a different account. All right, so I'm going to give that a save. And uh, I meant to say, not yarn start, yarn dev uh, to start up the server. Um, and then we can go to the slash logout page and see if it logs this out. The other thing is real quick is I want to add a link to this in the layout. So I think that's in, there we go, our components. So at the very end, I'll add a new one. I'm going to say log out and it takes us to the log out page. All right, we'll load this now and we can open up our application Go to our cookie, you can see our cookie there. Now, I can't remember if we made it where we clear the cookie or not, we'll find out. Um, but either way, we should be logged out after we press this. So I'm currently logged in. So if you're not, you wanna log in to test this. If we go to hello, we can access this page and we can see hello. Now, after I log out, we should not be able to access this page. So if I say log out, um, oh, we messed something up. You should use next inside the client side of your app. Oh, yes. So we ran this actually on the server side. So we want to say redirect instead of us just saying router.push here. This possibly is going to be run on the server, possibly might be run on the client side. 
So to be able to catch both those things, we want to use the redirect function that we made. And you'll notice what it does is it, check, it checks the uh, response, which will only be available on the server. And if it is, it does this. Otherwise, it does this. So it checks it for us. So let's say redirect, and we're going to pass in our context. And then we're going to say login still. OK, so save that. We'll do it again. Now, it should have logged us out because it's going to crash on line 12. So we can test this again in a second. Um, but if we access hello, you'll notice it just redirects us to login. So it is, in fact, stopping us from logging in, or accessing that page, I mean. All right, so I'm going to re-log in as this user. And we'll submit. Perfect. Uh, we can see the cookie. Now I'll log out. It takes me to the login. Cookie is gone. So it is now good and is working correctly. So perfect, that's how you do log out. Basically, we just create a different route that logs out the user and then redirects you to whatever page you want. Now you could probably take also an approach where like you click on this and it just runs this code right here, but I kind of like having it in its own route. It makes it very easy to just have it as a link or do a uh, router and push to it. All right, so next thing that I wanna go over real quickly is you may only wanna show the log out button, for example, or some other places on your website when the user is logged in. So basically you may want to display things when the user is logged in and other things when the user is not logged in. So to do that, we're gonna just go to our layout and this is the link in question which I do not wanna show when the user is uh, not logged in. So to do this, I'm gonna use the me component or the use the me query, which I guess we have not created a, a GraphQL query for it. Nope, we just have hello. So we can type this out real quick. I thought for some reason that we had already done it. So we're gonna say me, and this doesn't take any variables, and this gives us access to the user. So we can say first name, last name, and then any other fields that we wanna grab from this, email, name as well, I guess. So we get everything, let's prettify it. And this is gonna be a query. So this is how we know whether the user is logged in or not. So export const me query. So if this returns null, the user is not logged in. Otherwise, if they are logged in, we'll actually get the values for this. So we're gonna say yarn generate, and then we'll say yarn dev to have it start up afterwards. So now I can use that component that should have just been generated called me component. And this is going to be a rendered prop again, and we're just going to get access to this and I'm going to wrap this in curly braces here so I can say return. Now the reason why I did that is so now I can have some if statements up here to make it a little bit simpler with the code. So we have access to data here and we have also access to loading. So if not data or we're loading or data.me is null, then we're going to return null. Otherwise, we're going to return lockout. So if we come back over to our code, we'll do a refresh. You'll notice logout is not visible. Now let's see if I log in, tom at tom.com, and we submit. We still don't see it right now because it is cached. If I refresh, we should see it there. Perfect. So if we wanted the logout link to show up right away, right after we log in, and not have the user re-log in, or sorry, refresh the page to see it again, we can update the cache after the user logs in. So to do this, we can head over to our login page, and we're just going to add an update to this uh, login function that we're calling, which is coming from our login uh, component. So we're gonna say update, and then to update this, we have access to the cache as the first uh, parameter. Second parameter is going to be the response that we get back um, from the logging in. In our case, it's going to have the user. Uh, if we don't get data back, we're just going to return. Otherwise, because um, we need to have access, oops, not data, because we need to have access to the user. So we go to login, and looks like that's possibly null. So if we don't have either of those, we're just going to return. Otherwise, we have a user right here, which we're going to need. So we're going to write this user. So we're going to say cache.writeQuery. 
and the query that we're going to write is the me query and we can pass in the me query um, and this, this is just the type so it matches and makes sure that we are passing the right thing then we can pass in the data and you'll notice it's going to actually give us type definitions for this so we know it needs to have a type definition there of me and then here are all the fields and I can just pass in data.login and the fields should match up. Now, I don't know if I need to pass in the type name here. I'll pass it in just in case because it looks like it's optional. Uh, all right, so it refreshed. All right, so let's try uh, logging in again. So, okay, refresh, log out, refresh just to be for sure. So now copy my password. So now when I log in, uh, we should see this right away. And sure enough, we do, perfect. So that is how you can update the cache. And if I look at the logs, just making sure we didn't get any warnings or anything. So that's how you can update the cache and that's how you can kind of conditionally show the log out for that user. Uh, all right, so you should we showed that stuff. The one last thing I wanted to touch on is styled components. This is actually pretty easy to add. Few people are asking me how I like to style things with Next.js. Uh, I've been just using styled components because that's what I'm used to and it's pretty decent. Um, so that is what we're going to go through and we're just going to basically follow the example that is in the Next.js repo and then we're going to change like maybe a few things to get to work with TypeScript. So the first thing we need is to just install styled components and then add a Babel RC file. And we're just going to copy this here and we're going to paste it here. All right, so let's make a Babel RC. It looks like we already have one. And we're going to paste in this stuff. Looks like the only difference is we have a plugins. So I'm just going to add that right there. Uh, next up is installing styled components. And then the last part is to go to pages. We're going to add a special document tag. So we'll copy this. And this underscore document is going to be on every single page. So it's going to make sure it works on every single page. All right, so we just added styled components. Oh, uh, yes, let's go ahead and install the types for it as well. We don't need it. We can just get the latest version. Uh, and then for this stuff, we can put in like types, but I'll usually just cast it to anything because I'm copy pasting off of that. And I'll just say any, any. And uh, I think with this, I also say it's as any. Yep, and then it's happy with us. So I guess I don't really do much TypeScript typing on this particular component. Um, and I just kind of copy paste what from that particular uh, example to get styled components to work with Next.js slash styled. Uh, uh, I guess this is just server side rendering. Oops. I always forget that I'm using yarn dev and not yarn start. Um, and I guess let's go ahead and let's do our layout page. So I'm going to make my layout page. Um, we have a div that's wrapping everything. I'm going to call that my container. And we can say style.div. I guess we you want to do it like that maybe. Just to be safe. And I'm just gonna say the background color is FA FA FA. And then we're gonna import that from style components. Give that a save. And now we can come over here. And if you'll notice, we have like a slight different background color for this particular part. And this particular part is FFF. Here's FA, FA, FA. It's very slight. Let's do a, just a quick one and make it blue. That way you can see for sure. Oh, that's really ugly. Let's go back to FFF. Anyway, that is how you can add styled components um, if you want to with Next.js. And that is pretty much it for this series, guys. I hope that was helpful in getting an idea of how you can interact with a GraphQL API and then implement kind of logging in, registering users, all the basic stuff that you're going to need in pretty much every application 
uh, how to implement this in Next.js and with server-side rendering particularly, which kind of throws in, makes a couple of things a little bit more complicated than it needs to be.